What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to the fourth episode of this franchise series where we're building a zoo in the tundra biome. And we've just put in our llamas here and they look, oh my goodness, they're all lined up. They look very happy. And I realize we missed a couple of bits, which I'm gonna very quickly do in their habitat. The first thing is the guest facilities. I'm gonna put a donation box in and I may recolor these at some point because I'm not a massive fan of the blue, but I'm just gonna whack one of these outside. I'm gonna put one where they're kind of gathering. They're not blocking the animals necessarily. Uh, maybe another one over here and uh, one inside here too. And I'm going to do this because I these are points where I think they're going to gather. I'm actually going to move this to the other side and move this feeder slightly further in. Because I feel like this these are places that the llamas are going to come. They're all going to gather around here. I may move this slightly back actually. So there's room all the way around. Um, they're places that the llamas are gonna um, be and that guests are gonna gather around essentially. I just want to check that that hasn't ruined our... Ah, oh, it's ruined our little grass long. Okay, let me just move this back. So what we need to do is just put in a little bit more long grass, which is in terrain, because I just got rid of it then. And then I'm just gonna put the size down and we're gonna paint it. Put the size up a little bit, maybe. There we go. Put a little bit in here. Has it fixed it? Are they happy? Yeah, they're happy. 20%, 20%. That's what we like. So, these guys have that. I know that they're sick and the vet has been called. Yeah, so the vet will be taking these guys away to the vet surgery, which is over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's here. So, that's a very cool little building. Um, they'll take them inside. I'll maybe have a look at them later if we get time. But I don't, I don't want to take too long. I don't want to crack on and do this episode. Because what I'm planning on is doing our next habitat. And then in the uh, episode after that one we can take a shot at doing the facilities. I thought I'd try and do them in one episode, but it might be too long. And I've just seen that our mechanic research is complete as well, which means we've completed this. Wow, so we've got all the blueprints for the Arctic theme. So we're very well prepared for our next episode. And what we should probably do as well is get cracking on some guest facilities because we're gonna need them. Uh, what we can do is we could start doing some power and get the wind turbine um i'm actually i'm actually going to do this i do want more drink shops and i want more food shops and souvenirs etc but i think we'll be fine right at the start and what i actually want to do is get jewel to research power because when they've done this we can get wind turbines and at the minute we've only got transformers available to us and these only cost 500 pounds um 500 i don't know what currency planet zoo uses uh but once you place it it has an ongoing running cost of about a thousand pounds, which is so expensive. Whereas the uh, the wind turbine and the solar panel are both free, so that can be a massive expense that might be running your zoo into the ground if you've not got sustainable power. Uh, what I'm going to do now is now I think we're kind of done with this area. I'm going to start on the red panda habitat. So let's move our way over what i'm thinking is that we can have the habitat around here and i want to create a reasonably big area and put some climbing stuff in for them so i am going to continue this path along here uh, because i don't want to ruin what we had going on there and i think we've got a long way over here so let's let's carry on this can be kind of the main path coming off and we may go down here as well but what i want to do is have a little path that comes in here too Let's, let's give them, I don't need too much room. Let's go here. What I want to do is make sure that they're included in this water area so they can have a little water section that touches this area and still leave a bit of an entrance so we can make a nicer entrance on the way in. What I might do is kind of, in my mind, corner off these stones here so that this is kept free and we have at least this amount of room to play with. So, I think that's good for now. Let's carry on going down here. And that's probably good enough. I can turn the heat map off because I can't see anything with that one. Actually, I'm going to take that one back because I don't want them that close to the edge. And I'm going to start building a barrier. Now, we could do this a couple of ways. I've recently been to Amsterdam Zoo, which is amazing. I, If you haven't been before, you've got to go. It's... It's not the biggest zoo in the world, but it has some really cool ideas. And one of the main things they did in their zoo was they use water as a null barrier, essentially. So even like the lions, there's no there's no massive 
uh, wall in front. Um, they have an area which has a glass front to it, but the main kind of viewing area to the lions is just a small fence, kind of like this one here that we've got. And then they've got a massive stretch of water, which obviously the lions can't get through, and or at least get through and still get out. So it, it, it's kind of like, it provides a really natural barrier because it means that you can just kind of see into the habitat. And in saying this, I'm reminding myself that there is one more thing I wanted to do. Uh, speaking of guests interacting with our animals, I'm gonna go into the security section and the facilities and put uh, probably do not feed signs. I don't think we need do not disturb, but um, I'm definitely gonna put some of these in just to remind people that these animals, we feed them. We don't need them to feed them as well. I'm gonna put a couple in here, put one here. And another one in here. Please do not feed them. Look, you can see their feeder. That is sufficient. They do not need more food. Um, and maybe one here at the entrance, this side, in case people are coming back the other way, just so they know. As they come in, look, no feeding. <laughs> we feed the animals, you don't need to. So that's the plan. That's all taken care of. We can do security cameras at some point, but again, we're not really ready for that kind of thing yet. So I'm gonna go into security and crime and you can do do not feed signs and it will show you their radius. We don't really need that many, uh, but I quite like it. And we've got the do not disturb. I think the llamas are pretty chill around our um, people. Yeah, they're, they're not stressed, they're not stressed. They need some more, they need better keepers and they need all that. They need a lot more taken care of essentially, all our animals do. And I think once we put this third habitat in for the red pandas, we can get cracking on the facilities, get everyone super happy and loving where they are. And then we'll move forward with the zoo from there. So let's go back to what I was saying here. I think in this case, I might do some water. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, well, I could just put in straight water, but let's, Let's see if I might, I might lower it a little bit first and then do it. So let's put, um, I'm thinking have some red pandas in here because they're endangered and they are adorable. Look at them. They're so cute. And I think here it does say uh, they don't have any water requirement. I'm trying to remember, they used to say somewhere that would be like that, how much they could swim. But I can't remember for the life of me where this was. So I think, I'm not even sure they can swim in actual fact. So it could be anything. But what we'll do is we'll put some water in and then we'll, uh, once, once we've done that, we can have a little see, put the animals in, see what happens. Uh, let's just sculpt a little, I'm gonna use a cube. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. Go eight by eight, maybe not that deep actually. Just five by eight. And I'm going to hold down shift and move this up and down to drag it down. And I want it around here, really. Which isn't really eight meters. But as long as it kind of flows along here, I'm happy. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to probably mess it up anyway and rough it up, you know, make it look a bit more interesting. And then have it come around here. So I'm going to make this a slightly bigger area here. And this is the area that the water pump is going to feed from. And that's definitely included. And we'll have a little water area like that. Could have it come all the way around. Have them on a little island. Just need to check that this is kind of enough room. But I have a feeling they don't really like, they don't need a lot of room. And they're very, they're very chill. We can put some cool climbing areas that extend over the water if need be as well. So we can, we can beef out the actual uh, habitat land, so to speak. I don't think they have a very strong requirement for, for land anyway. Uh, 220 meters. If we have two adults, it barely goes up. This is one feature that it was, I don't think it's that new, but it's reasonably new. And we can... Uh, it just tells you how, how it increases. Because what they used to do is just say, oh, this is the requirement for one adult. And then you put loads of them in and then you'd, you wouldn't have a big enough space. Whereas now you can, you can say, oh, how much would I need if I had 10 pandas? And then it tells you. And, and obviously, you know, five. And what about five babies as well? Five, five juveniles. So you can put them in. Uh, at the minute, we're going to have, let's say there's got two. We only need 230 meters square, which I know this is going to be. So 
if we just put a habitat gate in, I'm going to have to replace some of this land. I'm going to go and add. I'm just going to smack it in there. Hmm, do I want it there? No, I'm going to put it over here. No. No, I'm going to plan it correctly. <laughs> I'm going to plan it correctly and put it somewhere around here so that the, the keepers could easily walk between. Maybe this is the best area. Just need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with whatever we're doing on the entrance. So maybe here is better. I'm going to go here. Oh, and I've gone on the wrong bit. Just need to make sure it's the right height. Apparently, I'm losing my ability to place land for some reason. There we go. That's better. I don't know what went wrong with me there. Okay. We have a little bit of a rough, a rough area. Can smooth this over. Some of the fun of this game is just kind of playing with the landscape. At least for me. I, maybe I'm weird. Up the intensity. And then let's put in a nice habitat gate. And I really like the wooden ones. Um, I know they're not everyone's favorite, but I like them. Why were you not happy that way around? You're happy to snap there. Let's put in some null barriers and see if we can change that. Make this slightly smaller. I'm going to go actually from here to nine meters. Let's go to there. And then, then try and just right, right clicking to uh, deselect in that instance as well. Can I make this a bit smaller so that it tucks around the habitat a little bit nicer? Am I happy with that? I'm not super unhappy with it. <laughs> Maybe that's good enough. I can always actually just pull the terrain this way a little bit if I want as well. Let's get rid of these. That might be the best way. I don't know why I've left that one in. Making everything awkward. That, the, the landscaping tools don't really love the barriers. You can get around that. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how, but there is a way that you can get around. So if you know that one, you can put it in the comments and then help everyone else out. Um, I've also got angle snap on for this, which isn't helping, but that should be good enough. Let's put in the wooden habitat gate. And where is it happy for me to put it? It's probably too close to the path, it's saying. I'm not sure if this is facing the right way around. I think. Oh no, it is the right way around. The mat goes on the outside, so the keeper side, rather than the uh, rather than the uh, habitat side. So hopefully, this path isn't going to be too difficult to connect. Please say we can just do a nice, easy. Of course we can. That's what was I thinking? Why would it be easy? Let's delete this. We'll move the barrier in. Go. So I'm going to take angle snap off because it's annoying me. Let's go like here. Let's make it five meters. And put it back there. And let's put a habitat gate in here. That's more. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Connect you up. Just connect. <laughs> ah, why is it so difficult sometimes? <laughs> I'm going to turn off snap alongside barriers. That's not really helping me out. Okay, I'll turn it back on. Sometimes the paths can just be a bit of a pain. I'm going to delete these, which I'm very scared about doing. Put these back in. Okay, we can get something going there. That's not ideal, but it will work for now. And I don't want to do too much to change it because it's fine, it's fine. And now what we can do is we're gonna have to change some of these. So these are climbable. Uh, resistance grade three, transparent, not climbable. That's what we like. So I can also put some rocks in here. Um, let's just check what resistance grade they need. So they only need grade two, they're not very aggressive. So we could just put some glass in here, across here, like a glass panel. 
but I think maybe we'll do it with some rocks and make a little feature that the uh, the, the uh, keepers are walking through. So we have our entrance. Now, if we continue the barrier along with the null barrier, we'll be able to work out how big this habitat is. And here's where the problem is going to be because I've taken it right out to the edge. So I'm going to have to pull back this terrain on this side. Another thing you can use, you can use chisel to make landscapes look a little bit more natural sometimes. Um, just takes, yeah, it kind of like adds some rough edges in. Sometimes it's about smoothing it out, sometimes it's about uh, roughing the terrain up. We're going to need some point where they can get to the water as well, which I'm thinking could be around here. Might be a good place for it. Create a bit of a smooth area where they can access the water. Uh, maybe not quite that much. Just raise. Oh, just right clicking to get rid of the water there as well. Turn my strength down a bit. Too strong. My goodness. And then we add in just a little bit. That's. I still don't like it. I'm going to have to stop being perfectionist about this and just let it go at some point. That's probably fine. We have significant water here. It's not quite made it around here, which is interesting. Ah, it's because I've made it too high. That's fine. Just push it down here. I don't want that to be super big water level. I just want it to be some all the way around. That looks a little bit low over here still where I've brought the sides in, uh, which isn't really ideal. I, see, I guess we'll see what happens when we put the actual pandas in um, and we can kind of play with it a bit more then. He says as he messes around the wall a bit more. Just gonna wrap it up a bit. Don't wanna chisel it quite that much. Let's go with that. Let's go with that for now. I'm going to put the water in so it's there. And now we can kind of get a good idea what it's going to look like roughly. So let's actually finish the barrier because I can never seem to actually get around to finishing this task. I have no idea what is wrong with me. Okay, I'll carry on down here. And turn the length down over here so we can get a bit closer to... I'm actually going to undo those. Get a little bit closer to the edge. Right, that's connected up there. The, the null barriers don't have to be perfect anyway. And it's so big, it's fine. It's huge, it's probably like 10 times the amount of space that they need, but it's got a lot of water in it. So, you know, when you, when you take off this amount of water, uh, 1773 from 2424 it's probably it's probably about right it's, it's probably like four times as much as they need rather than 10 times as much as they need but that's what we're going for we want a nice natural environment and it'll be it'll look nice when we put some trees in and all of that jazz we have a disease animal we've done this one i think we're good the only other alert i've got on the side is there's no security guard i know don't worry it's fine we don't need one We'll be fine. We'll survive. We'll survive. So let's get building on this. I kind of want to get the animals themselves so we can see how, how, uh, I guess what type of rocks we need and what type of trees. So I'm going to come out of here, reset all filters and search for red panda. Oh my goodness, there's some beautiful ones, but they're very expensive. I want to go down a little bit. We could adopt them. Um, I, I, is there any we can buy with money? <laughs> uh, very expensive. We could afford these, I think. Oh no, it's still going to be more. We could afford these two, but this one is very small. I'm going to refresh again, see if we get any different ones. Lots on offer. we will probably have to play to get any more, because it was still paused. I think this is a good one though. I'm gonna get him. He's he's quite he's quite good. Let's adopt you. One thing I was gonna say as well is if you would like 
to name one of the pandas or have the panda named after you, please comment below. And I think it'd be cool if we could get some of these animals named after the, uh, you know, the viewers, every, all you guys who are watching. Um, at the minute, we've got Larone, our big uh, bison, and his little family. We've got a couple of little ones in here. So we've got loads, loads of animals to play with. It'd just be fun. If you guys want to suggest names or, yeah, like I said, if you've got your own kind of uh, YouTube account name that you want it to be, we, we can go ahead and start naming some of these. I think it'd just be fun to get a bit more engagement with everyone, you know, get everyone involved in, in naming the animals. Makes our zoo a bit more personalized and, and more of like a, a team thing rather than just me choosing everything. <laughs> so yeah, please do comment in the, in the comment section what animals you would like to be named what and we'll see. I may not take all of the suggestions because I think it'd be nice if everyone has a bit of a say. So just maybe just suggest a few that you would like and we'll see what we can do about it. Okay. Back to this episode. Are there any decent females? Ah, it's very expensive. Could, could go that way. I think I just got the male. Let's send him. We'll just have him for now and then we'll see if there's a better female later. Let's put him in quarantine. I may have to play to let that um, actually happen. One other thing, I keep realizing the more I look around, we don't have any education over here, but we'll put that in in a second. I'm happy to wait for that. Let's do all the education for these while we're building it though. So I'm thinking we're going to need some of these fence panels again over this side. By control D, we can put these in. And I've just taken a group of them and uh, put them together to create this fence panel section. I will probably carry on with this uh, and maybe speed it up for you guys because I have a feeling this isn't the most interesting part of building a habitat. So give me one second and I'll build all of this out. Okay, our quarantine's passed on the red panda, so I'm just going to pause that there. And we'll get a couple more of these fence posts in. I think we're probably just going to put some rocks in where these end, because we're kind of done other than that. Um, just continue on here. Let's get this little guy in, though. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, because there is absolutely no way I'm going to get it right. Um, but I am going to put in some... Uh, some rocks from the tundra. Oh, which, which area is he from? Oh my goodness, all the snow's melting. What is happening? Must be summer. Oh, yeah, it's June. Wow, look at it all. Look at it all without any snow. I want to see actually what uh, our vet research is doing at the minute. Oh, they're doing the llamas. So we're just doing level one. That makes sense. Let's put our first red panda in. I'm going to just use the same rocks we have in the tundra rocks from over here. I'm probably going to select a group. Um, which ones do I want? Probably do something like this and just control D. Uh them in about here. Now yeah, I'm just going to play around, just move them about a bit. So it's not exactly the same. Just pressing X to adjust their position. Control X to duplicate and uh, keep in the same kind of grid area. I don't know how to explain that one really. Um, to keep it so it's the same, same path bit. Control uh, D just duplicates it but it doesn't keep it kind of attached. Just want to build it out to make sure we, it looks as natural as it can do. Oh, look at me again. I'm just placing rocks for ages. Just keep doing it. But the thing is, the more the more rocks you put in, the more natural it looks. <laughs> it's really hard to stop when you get started. I want to cover up that keypad. Looks cool. Right. That looks fine. There's no way they're getting out there. It's probably a massive area I'm missing. Or they can just swim really well, and I'll find that out. 
Oh my goodness, look at them. Look how cute they are. Look at that little guy. Having the time of his life. Walking through the tall grass. Probably not appropriate for him whatsoever. I think he needs to be in trees. Probably hating his environment right now, but we know that he's happy with the land requirements. So yeah, one one six seventy, definitely enough for him. Um, we have another like low wealth for you, I'm sure. I'm sure. We need to connect the habitat up. We know that already. What I'm interested in is can he escape? Yes, he can, because they're awesome climbers, and I've built this entrance out of rocks. So where is he getting up? It's curious. I'm just gonna mess around with these rocks a little bit and see if we can if we can get rid of that. So he must be coming up here somewhere. How are you getting out, little guy? How are you getting out? So if I have to just keep building this higher, that is what I will do. Looks like it's getting less, it's getting more difficult for him to, to climb. There we go. Now we can't get out. That's what we like. Okay. No risk of pandas escaping. And it looks alright. I think that looks quite cute, that little rock entrance. I'm just gonna... Oh, I wanna build it out now. I wanna carry on building it in here. Hopefully this isn't gonna let him escape. We'll have to see. I'll just keep the rocks really low. Quick check, quick check. Oh, he can. Okay, that was a terrible plan. Oh, no, it's fine. He can get on there. I don't mind him climbing on those. Okay, that that's fine. I, I can happy with that. I am happy with that. This is a little rock area there. It's all good. Everyone wins. No problem. Ap apart from him, he's super unhappy because it's completely the wrong environment for him. So, his social's wrong because he probably... Oh, he needs, he needs more um, climbing area. He needs enrichment, which we'll get from the climbing area. And I'm sure, well, he's got nowhere near enough plant coverage. And he needs the correct terrain. So let's paint the terrain first. What we want is a little... We can have some more snow, so that's fine. But he needs more short grass and less long grass. Oh, that's easily achieved. So let's come over here. Maybe kind of... Have a little short grass area over here. Keeping it at 30%. I don't want to blend too strongly. My main concern is that we're going to need some short grass everywhere. And he needs more soil. So that's fine. Let's have this kind of area around here be a bit soilier. Some heavy soil over here. Some lighter soil. Something up. He's happy with that. The only thing is, he's not going to be happy with it when it starts snowing again. So what we can do is melt the snow. Uh, this isn't something I did for the llamas because I, I kind of wanted to build a, a shelter. But he's going to need the right temperature. And I don't know what this was for pandas. I think they're quite they're quite relaxed about it. Yeah, zero to twenty nine to to twenty nine degrees C. Oh, okay. That's not that cold, so he's going to need some temperature anyway. Um, I didn't want to put them in because heaters are expensive to run compared to a roof. So, you know, just easier. I think they're in habitat, actually. Heaters and coolers. We'll just put a heater in. Um, put a couple of heaters in to heat up the place. Um, let's actually whack one here. Just want to make sure they're covering the whole area. There. One over here and one over here. I'm gonna sink these into the ground because they're so ugly. Um, but we're gonna try and keep this at around 10 degrees, let's say. Maybe. Let's 
Okay, he's happy with it. We're gonna keep it at five. Five degrees. They don't need it to be super warm. And it's gonna be a little bit cheaper. So they're not they're gonna they're not gonna run now because uh, they don't need to. I'm just gonna sink these down. Just think of these as kind of underfloor heating in the ground. I don't know whether that's even possible really uh, in the soil, but I'm sure someone's come up with a great solution that makes that possible. And they've got access to, I'm assuming, clean water because it's touching this water pump here. So that's all being pumped, it's all connected. So he should have a lot of those needs met now. He's not gonna be happy because of the space because we don't have any climbing. I'm gonna put some trees in now, which is gonna help that out massively. I'm gonna filter by, uh, where is he from? He's from Tejo, we're gonna go. Oh, where's this? One of the trees is in the habitat. Oh, it's probably this one. Is he happy with that one? It might actually be from the right place. I mean, we are in the right biome, so it wouldn't be crazy. Let's go Asia. Uh, what comes up under trees? Yeah, it's it's these. Oh my goodness. Wow, okay. Well, wasn't he lucky? Couple of these in. There's not a lot, though. I'm a bit surprised. I thought they have a much more. He likes the temperate stuff as well, but... It's whether that would really grow in the Tasia. It's a bit unlikely. So what I might do is put in some of these. I'll put in the bushes and everything as well. So he's got some, he's got some bushes. Put these kind of around. Um, a few little ones around the trees. Maybe some of these. Oh, it's the same. Is it the same one? They all look the same. Oh, they're all berries. A nice big patch of them there. I do like how it blends in though, all that stuff. I think this moss is so ugly. I just don't want to include it. And then we got rocks, uh, which you know, are we are we keen on them? Probably not. So, oh, it's because I'm on tundra. What we really want is Taja. Goodness, that's why I was so surprised. I swear they have more trees. Oh, it's not really a lot more though. We can have broken pines. Let's put some of these in. I think they can climb these. So that's probably why. Are these climbable? Does it say on them? Let's filter by property and climbable no okay scott's pine is the broken ones aren't but presumably these are included oh there's loads more they're in here so i'm going to take we'll leave in a couple of the broken ones but i don't want loads i think we'll just have a few to keep it realistic um, and then we can have some nice other trees there we go, that's what we're talking about. Look, get some get some variety in there. Get a little sapling, a couple of saplings in there. I want some stuff that they can climb. These Himalayan pines are good. Looks very climbable. Himalayan birch, sure. You know what, we'll go with any of it. I just don't want to put things like trees that will only grow in the savannah. I don't really understand how they would be planted in a zoo that's uh, like completely frozen over. Like this is the tundra. So Taja, I can understand how we could take stuff that doesn't necessarily come from there. And with a bit of nurturing, we can we can grow it here. But it just, I don't understand when they've got, you know, putting putting trees in that would never be here. It's just a bit silly to me. So they can have loads more coverage. They love a good forest, I think, don't they? I think their main thing is bamboo as well, which is what's confusing me so much. 
Just how do they live in the Tejo if there isn't bamboo? Oh, they don't like these bushes. Oh, the ones I spent ages putting in. Oh, okay. They'll have to be the other ones then. Put in some of these. Okay, they're alright with these guys. I'll put in a couple of these. I'm just confused. I'm looking for the uh, the old bamboo. And these these flowers are so nice. I love these. I try and use them wherever I can. I really love these these purple the twin flowers. I'm gonna undo that last one and move it. Okay, that's probably enough of those. We will see then. I mean, we're giving them the bamboo they want. I just know that they do normally live around bamboo, so it's a bit strange that they've not got any. Um, if we press play, look, they've already got loads. They just love climbing the trees. So I think, oh, that research is complete as well. Get some enrichment for our llamas. So let's put that in and see if it's the same for these guys, because it may well be. Filter by species, we're gonna go llama. And they can have the, the grazing feeders as well, the ball feeders. So I'm gonna put two of these in. I'm gonna put one outside and one inside. So I think that'll be interesting. Um, Cause that gives them enrichment for, uh, for their grazing. I'm gonna put a herb scent marker in here. It's like a food enrichment in, instead of just being fed in the food trough that we have. And then a grab ball, let's just whack that there. Still happy with your 20? Yeah, we're all good. They got loads. Um, your enrichment should now go way up. Yes. That's the stuff. We're going to leave them. Oh, I'm sure it is a disease risk. I'm going to add them while we're here. Let's add... I think we probably need a new work zone, so I might, might just create one now, actually. I'll tell you what, I'll just... We'll hire a new keeper. And then we're just going to add this to the existing work zone. And we'll just say... Bison. Llama. And... Uh, red. Panda. Okay. And now we've got them in. They look, they look so cute. This place looks amazing, actually. I really love the trees in the sun. And I, honestly, the lighting, every time I swear I say it, but the lighting is so amazing in this game. Um, will they get a good view of the pandas? I don't know, but you might see them. And I just think it's cute to have them in, in the wild. You know, just living their, living their best life. You'll see them when they go to drink as well. So what I'll probably do is have a little area over here that we move, move that tree back. Just this one over slightly. Because that can be there, because that one's broken. And then we can put in a little feeding area right here. I'm going to go for food trough medium because they're only tiny. And that's. Do they use that? I don't think they do actually. I think they probably use the, um, the climbing one. Uh, red panda. Yeah, they use these. Oh, boreal feeding platforms. I want to put one in low there. In fact, let's grab both of these. Move this tree over here. Put it front and center stage. Maybe slightly further back so they can actually get in front of it. And then the keepers can throw the food on there as well and they can, they'll all have a great time. They've got... Um, water from the actual lake area over here. There's a little drinking spot. So that's what they'll do with that. That should be big enough for them. I don't think they're going to need a... There's a four meter one, but I think the three meters is probably fine for these guys. There's only going to be a few of them. And they're very cute and small. Let's see if we can get another one, actually. Uh, are there any females? Oh! Oh, these are good. Oh, let's get her. She's way better. She's a bit more expensive, but we can definitely afford it. Gonna send her to quarantine first because we don't want her to get sick. 
and then also going to make sure that our keepers are both assigned and we will train them up when we can. We need to add this to the vet work zone as well. And we might as well add it to the mechanic work zone, even though I don't think they're going to be doing very much. Other than mending this gate, perhaps, if that, that wood starts to rot, who knows. And then what we need to do is add in some donation boxes. Yes, and we can kind of already see where people are grouping themselves. Let's put some over here. They're going to be grouped around here because that's where the water is. That's where they can get that viewing spot. Going to put one over there. I think that's probably good enough for coverage. Um, what we need now is education. And for that, I'm just going to steal our boards. I'm going to pause again. I'm going to steal these. Just selecting all of them and control clicking fence because we don't actually want that bit. I'm going to control D and just add it in. I need to create a group with these actually and just save it as a blueprint or something. That would be the easiest thing to do. I'm just pressing R to go into these because they're part of an existing group. So that's how I'm deleting those. I'm not going to worry too much about the the, uh, the actual fence. I think it looks fine. I just want to make sure people are educated about our red pandas and how cute they are. We also probably won't have power over here, so we're going to have to sort that out in the next episode. Uh, red panda. Not something I'm going to try and tackle now, though. I'm just going to adjust all of these to be red panda. And then the speakers as well. I'm not worried about them not working at the minute. We'll just we'll do that in the future. It just needs to be hooked up to power. And in the meantime, you know, it's just education. So if we're missing it, we're missing it, but it's not the end of the world. I think this one must be powered by the original. Yeah, it's just included the original power source. So it's only, only these two that are missing out. That one has just been placed in the line as well. It's almost like I planned it, my goodness. I can't believe how lucky I got then, just placing them. Uh, but yeah, I think we're looking good. And we're just gonna grab some rocks from here. Copy them over, whack them over here as well. Oh, not quite there. I'm going to split them around. And move them in. And then we can just kind of shift these across. Just creating a bit of a natural, semi-natural rock formation that's just blocking off the path, really. That's all it's meant to do. Might raise this one up a bit. I want to make it so it's unappealing to climb. <laughs> if there are children nearby or something, don't want them to be thinking, oh, I can climb on top of that rock. Maybe this one should be slightly higher. I think that's looking okay quite happy with this. We have a little water area around our whole habitat. Soon we'll have another red panda when she comes out of quarantine. She's just being looked over right now. Um, I don't think anyone is sick still, are they? I think all of our disease animals are okay. We're getting a warning about this one being a, a disease. Okay, it's, yeah, I, okay, I jinxed it because I said there were no disease animals. We need to sort out our work zones because that's what's making all our animals sick. Um, I don't think that these guys need any hard shelter either. Oh, they do need some hard shelter. So we'll add that in very quickly. I'm tempted even to just use one we've already done. Um, but it might be nice to build them a little hut or something. So I think, seeing as this episode has been going on for quite a while already, I will probably leave that for the next episode. And in the next one, we're going to make our guest facilities. We're going to make a little... Uh, shelter for this little dude right here and his lady friend when she arrives and we're going to make some guest facilities that's the plan let's see how it goes i hope you've enjoyed this episode if you have please give it a like it really helps the channel out and i'll see you next time